person and you're talking about that now, you're arguing that now, but should you have shown that Congress can make that argument? My mission, my mission is to defend the constitutional separation of powers and executive privilege. And I knew from day one of getting that subpoena based on my experiences in the White House, from reading the Office of Legal Counsel memos at the Department of Justice, that absolute testimonial immunity was in, in, in place. McGahn, Dearborn, Conway, Porter. I can give you a whole long string of senior White House advisors who did exactly what I did and were never prosecuted. And if I had gone to Congress and played the piecemeal game with them, I would have done damage to the separation of powers and I would not have been doing my duty. I would not have been obeying my oath of office. Next. Peter Navarro is perceived as prioritizing the safeguarding of the division of powers and the authority of the executive branch within the Constitution. His stance aligns with advocating for the limited autonomy of both the government and the executive branch. His refusal to adhere to congressional summons is construed as a defense of institutional integrity and executive prerogative. This reflects conservative principles that uphold established norms and the rule of law. The assertion that Peter Navarro's actions are in line with legal counsel and precedent demonstrates a conscientious effort to uphold constitutional ideals and preserve a balance of power among government entities. His conduct and statements could be viewed as a pushback against encroachments on fundamental institutions and the encroachment of administrative authority by other governmental departments.